Hello, and a very warm welcome to LNT Royal YouTube channel. What an introduction. Jordan Brooks, Executive Director of United States of Women, she introduced Megan with. Megan is a philanthropist, an outspoken advocate for women's empowerment, who has used her voice to support many global and local organizations. With her husband Prince Harry, she's focused on Archwell, her new non profit organization building passionate communities online and off to serve our collective well being. A Duchess joined the When All Women Vote Couch Party as their first speaker. It's hosted by When We All Vote a Non Profit, nonpartisan organization with a mission to increase participation in every election and close the race and age voting gap by changing the culture around voting, harnessing grassroots energy and through strategic partnership reach every American. And it was launched in 2018 by Meghan's friend Michelle Obama, as well as Tom Hanks, Lynn, Moel Miranda, Janelle Mooney, Chris Paul, Faith Hill, and Tim McGraw. This year also marks the 100th anniversary since the 19th Amendment was set in place, giving women the right to vote. And now several women are coming together for the when all women vote event this week to inspire and empower others to register to vote. Megan said her reason for thinking voting is so important is, we vote to honor those who came before us and to protect those who will come after us. Because that's what community is all about. We are so pleased to have Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, join us this evening. Megan is a philanthropist and outspoken advocate for women's empowerment who has used her voice to support many global and local organizations. With her husband, Prince Harry, she is focused on Archwell, their new nonprofit organization building compassionate communities online and off to serve our collective well-being. Thank you so much for joining us, Megan. Well, hi, everybody. This is exciting. I mean, I, I'm really thrilled that you asked me to be a part of this. And I just I, I think this is such an exceptional time. So happy to be here for my friend Michelle Obama's When We All Vote and to kick off the when all women vote couch party. Um, I think, look, if we're looking at what's happening here and the work that you're doing at the United States of Women, it is fair to say that we are all very grateful for that work because we need it now really more than ever. So as I was thinking about this a little bit, I thought when I think about voting and why this is so exceptionally important for all of us, I would frame it as we vote to honor those who came before us and to protect those who will come after us. Because that's what community is all about. And that's specifically what this election is all about. You know, I think we're only 75 days away from election day. And that is so very close. And yet there's so much work to be done in that amount of time because we all know what's at stake this year. I know it. I think all of you certainly know it. And if you're here on this, fun um, fun event with us, then you are just as mobilized and energized to see the change that we all need and deserve. So I'm inspired to see all of the work that you're doing in your communities, as well as for your communities. As you just mentioned earlier, you know, this week we are recognizing the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which of course gave women the right to vote, but not all women, and specifically not women of color. And as we look at things today, though it had taken decades longer for women of color to get the right to vote, even today we are watching so many women in different communities who are marginalized, still struggling to see that right come to fruition. And that is, it's just simply not okay. And when we look at the attempts of voter suppression and what that's doing, it's all the more reason we need each of you to be out there supporting each other to understand that this fight is worth fighting and we all have to be out there mobilizing to have our voices heard. So, you know, it's interesting. I think we are pro obviously faced with a lot of problems in our world right now, both in the physical world and in the digital world. But we can and must do everything we can to ensure all women have their voices heard. Because at this juncture, if we aren't part of the solution, we are part of the problem. If you aren't going out there and voting, then you're complicit. If you are complacent, you're complicit. And I think when we are looking at all the different ways that we can engage, we can support one another, it doesn't necessarily matter what the issue is that speaks to your heart. Maybe it's the environment, maybe it's the rights of women, maybe it's the rights of children, maybe it's healthcare, whatever it is, 
We can make the difference in this election and we can and we will make the difference in this election. You know, as I continue to think about the rest of this day and all the amazing work you're going to be doing, texting eligible voters, making sure that they are registered, making sure that they can have the impact that we all need and really want, then I think it's an exciting day because it is the countdown to the change that we would all like to see for the better for our country and watching all of you do your part in whatever way to just encourage each other to have your voices heard. So I appreciate the work you're doing. I thank you so much, you know, in the fraught moment right now that we find our nation exercising your right to vote isn't simply being part of a solution. It's being part of a legacy. So thank you for being part of that legacy with us. Take good care of yourselves and of each other. And I can't wait to see what we can all accomplish together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Megan, for joining us and for your tireless advocacy on behalf of women all over the world. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is fantastic. Well done, guys. So now I'm really excited to introduce another analysis. Fans think Prince Harry and Meghan Markle should listen to their PR experts more. It is no secret that most famous people have a team of public relations experts managing their image, and royals are no different. In fact, since royals often cannot talk to the press themselves, the work of their PR team is even more significant in helping them craft a public persona. However, despite having experienced PR people around them, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle still receive a lot of public criticism. Some fans now believe that this is because the couple does not listen to their PR experts as often as they should. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have been dealing with a lot of negative press. Ever since Meghan and Harry's relationship became public in 2016, Meghan has been at odds with the British press. She constantly received negative coverage, with a fair amount of it being reportedly due to racism and sexism. Even after Meghan and Harry married in 2018, things did not get better for the couple. They have repeatedly been criticised for a number of their actions, including taking private jets, spending cat's fares, money on clothes and home renovations and making their sons Beth and christening extremely private. Fans think Harry and Meghan don't listen to their PR experts enough. After the release of Finding Freedom by Omid Scobby and Carolyn Durand, a biography which aims to tell Harry and Meghan's side of the story, fans are now beginning to think the couple's PR mishaps could have been prevented had they listened to the experts around them. In the book, there were a few instances in which Harry and Meghan clashed with their royal aides and chose to ignore other people's advice. A fan said on Reddit, I think Harry and Meghan are feeling self-righteous indignation that they've been wronged and if they don't agree with an expert, they move on. They are so sure of their mostly self, concede victimization, that they feel they need to be heard. Meanwhile, another person agreed, writing, Finding freedom basically confirms your comments about Harry and Meghan moving on if they disagree with an aide or expert giving them advice. Harry was told not to take the private jet back to England from the Google Summit, and he did anyway. It's mind-blowing that they think they always know best. They may know what's best for them personally, but they don't always know best when it comes to air public image. Fans think Prince William and Kate Middleton have managed to improve their image over time. On the other end of the spectrum, fans believe Prince William and Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge, have listened to advice from their aides, and this is paying off for the couple. Unlike Harry and Meghan, William and Kate continue to receive high approval ratings from the public. Additionally, they do not often find themselves in PR messes. However, some fans have also noted the negative coverage of Harry and Meghan could be doing William and Kate a favour. A fan said on Reddit, I think William and Kate are doing a great job, but also benefiting from the terrible job Harry and Meghan are doing. If it only William and Kate to write about, the press would be pushing for more. But now it's, William and Kate do an event, release a photo, squeeze squee nice, is that dress everywhere, who did her highlights and then, Meghan and Harry are douching it up with another press release. Please support Growing LMT Royal Channel by subscribe channel, like and share videos are. Your support is the motivation for our to produce better videos. Don't stop. 
check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more LMT Royal videos about your favorite Royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.